Okay, and we'll talk about panlaki. Okay, panlaki is, in English, that's affixes or affix. Okay, and then I'll give you some instructions regarding our pagsasanay or our practice so that you will know how to use pandiwa or the verbs in relation to the handout I gave you and the different uh, panlapi okay, or affixes that we have in the Filipino language. Okay, let's answer your takdang aralin first just to check if you have really understood the lesson. Eva, number one, please. Just read the Filipino sentence and then give us the answer. Bumili, pinanay, name the short noun. Bagong. 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 Kian, kaapo. Okay. What's your answer? The short noun. Short noun. Okay. Why? Um, because it's. Bumili si nanay ng bagong sasakyan kahapon. It answers the question, what? Right? What did mom buy? And it's like the direct object. Car is the direct object. So if there's a direct object involved, we use the short noun, NG. Okay? So the short noun is the correct answer. Maria? Yeah. Long noun. Long noun, why? I think because it has midnight, so it's like a part of day. Okay, part of day, we use the long noun. So if it involves time or any part of the day, we use the long noun. Okay, Piper, number three. Okay, why is your answer long now? Okay, repetition. Okay, that's the mark there. If it involves replicated verb, okay, or keeps on, and then the verb, that's long now. Okay, or, Angie? Okay, possession of someone. A house of your best friend. So we show, uh, we use the short noun. That's correct. Dawson, five. Kumain kami ng bangus kahapon kasama si Megan. And it would be the short one because it's like an object. Okay, object. Direct object. That's also correct. Okay, for number five, that's short noun. Okay, here are the correct answers. Raksa? Long noun. Okay, it involves time, so the answer is long now. That's correct. Okay, so seven. Okay, very good. You chose relationships, so we use short now. Um, let's have Piper again for number eight. Okay. okay. Why short now? Okay. Property of something. Okay. Or an entity. So, ang ingay, short ng sasakyan. That's correct. And then number nine, Angie? Good. Mm -hmm. Why? I can explain why long now. Okay, why Carissa? Okay, that's correct. Okay, so if um, after the nang is an adverb, you have to use the long now. Okay, 
And number 10, Eva. Tina, Tita, Milibros, and Tito Juan. Tito Jun. Jun. I do not think pa akitao ng alam kung ko ng hapo. And is the long lang or alam kung ko and then the short lang. Okay, so if there is time and then part of the day, what goes first? Okay, you have to use the short, uh, long nang first and then followed by the short nang. Okay, there are the correct answers. And for this homework, I'd like to congratulate Michelle and Carissa for getting the perfect scores. Let's give them a round of applause. Good job, guys. Okay, now our topic for this afternoon is all about Okay. What were the first two parts of speech that we talked about? What's the first one? What are nouns in Tagalog? Pang. <laughs> okay. There's a problem there with the pronunciation. It's? Okay. Pangalan. Okay. It has the same pronunciation as the Filipino term for your name. Okay. And then pronoun. Okay, panghali. This is the third one. Okay. Balarila three pandiwa grammar three verbs. Okay. Okay. Dawson. Gusto mo bang matuto ngayong araw? Matuto means learn. Okay, very good, Dawson. Next one, Carissa. Kumusta ang iyong ibang klase? Ibang, ibang mga klase. Ibang is other. Okay, very good. Mabuti po. Alia? Alin ang mas gusto mo? Gatas o kape? Okay, how do you complete the sentence? Mas. Mas. To. Mas gusto ko. Mas gusto ko. Ay. Ay. Okay, very good. Okay, mas gusto ko ay kape. Now, if it's small, that means you. Okay, so if, you, if you're the one talking already or speaking already, then you have to use the proper pronoun, ko. Okay. Mm. Angie, nakatikim ka na ba ng pansit? Nakatikim means have you tasted? Or have you tried? Okay. Is that complete sentence? Hindi po. Ako. Then what's the verb there? The verb is, yeah, taste it. Hindi po ako. Kim. Nang pansit. Okay, that's a complete answer. Hindi po ako nakatikim ng pansit. Okay? Now, pandiwa or verbs, guys, ito ay mga salitang nagpapahiwatik ng kilos o galaw. Which means to say that these are words that express actions or movements. Now, we know that in English, verbs can be action words or they could be linking words, right? We have linking, we also have auxiliary verbs, we have all these sorts of verbs. But our focus here will primarily be on the action words, okay? Some of the linking verbs, I already mentioned them, okay? The linkers that I mentioned last time, those are just some of the linking verbs that we have in the Filipino language. So it's time for us to talk about the action words, okay? Words that show action or movements. Okay. Now, one unique feature of verbs in the Filipino language is that it's always affixed, okay? In short, there are... It could be prefixes, suffixes, infix, 
circumflex. Okay? So, if a word or a verb is just a root, it's not a guarantee that it's really a verb. Okay? Because sometimes a root word for a verb can become a noun. So you have to really examine if the word is a noun, a verb, or if it's a fix already, it becomes a verb. I'll show you examples later. Okay, let's have the first one. Everyone, can you say, nag-aaral? Okay. okay, it translates to study. And then, please say, nagpipinta. Okay, now... As what I mentioned a while ago, not all roots in the verb are originally verbs. Okay? They can also be nouns. Example, the word aral. Okay? For nag-aaral. Aral in Filipino means lesson. So it's a noun. Okay? But if you compare it with nagpipinta, the root there is pinta. Pinta means paint. It's a verb. You get what I'm, what I'm trying to say? Okay. So the root is not always a verb originally. It can be a noun and then a fix. And then a noun affix can become a verb. Okay. That's the um, morphology okay, in the Filipino language. Okay. Next one. Everyone, please say, nagsasalita. Okay, what's the root word here? What do you think is the root word? Salita, which in Tagalog translates to word. Okay. Salita means word. Okay. Or it could also be speak. Okay. So this is a classic example of a root that can be both noun and verb. And once a fix, nagsasalita, it becomes a verb. Okay, next one. Nagsasalita means speaking. Next one, everyone, please say naglalaro. Root word is laro, which is, okay, laro is game, sport, okay, or it could also be the verb play. So if it's naglalaro, it means playing. Now, one thing that you have to remember is this. If there is like a duplication of syllable, example, naglalaro, nagsasalita, the verb is ongoing or progressive. Okay? If there's a repetition of syllables. Next one. Please say, tumitingin. Okay. Root would be? Tingin, okay? Tingin can be a verb like look or see or watch. Or tingin could also be like gaze. So it could be a noun or a verb if it's only root. Okay? And then the second one, say sumasayaw. Root is sayaw, which can be a verb meaning to dance. Okay? Or the noun, still dance. Okay, sayaw. Okay. Next one. Kindly say, tumatakbo. tumatakbo. Root is, takbo, which translates to, run. Okay. That, in that case, the root is only a verb. Okay, takbo, run. And then, second one is lumalangoy. Root is langoy, which means swim. Okay, yes, Carissa? Okay, so, if you say like run as a noun, it just also says I'm going to go on a run. Yeah, it could also be a noun. Okay. Yeah. Takbo could be also. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That also be a noun. Okay. Langoy. Okay. Um, it can also be either like a noun or a verb because we also have like langoy, okay, ang paglangoy or ang langoy ni, okay, it could also be a noun. Okay. 
Okay? But usually, langoy is used as a verb in the Filipino language. Okay? Swim. Okay? These are just some of the basic uh, verbs that you have to know in the Filipino language. Okay. Now, this time, I want you to go to your handout. And let's try to go over some of the um, verbs there. Okay, how many pages is this? 16 pages. <laughs> Imagine if I were to ask you to supply all the root for all of the verbs here. Definitely, that's impossible. Okay. So I'm just going to mention some of the commonly used verbs here. Okay, for example, this one. Akyat. Akyat means climb. Akyat. Okay. And then, Alice. Alice means to leave or to depart. Okay. So when you tell a person, Alice ka, meaning leave. Okay. Alok is offer. Okay. Alokin mo ako ng bibing ka. Offer me bibing ka. Okay. Amin. Confess. May aaminin ako sa iyo. I have something to confess to you. Amoy. Smell. Okay. Amoyin mo ang kwarto ito. Smell this room. Okay. Mm -hmm. We also have yan, aral, study. So if dance is a yaw, sing is to awit. Okay. Umawit ka. Please sing. Okay. Or awitin mo ang kantang ito. Sing this song. Okay. Balik. Okay, that means come back or return. Okay, for example, you tell your friend who suddenly left you, Oi, Maria, balik ka. Come back here. Okay, return. This one. Pagbalot, ha? Sorry. It's balot. Okay. Now, this is the usual practice of Pinoy's whenever they go to gatherings and they have like lots of food there. Okay. I don't know if you have observed this one. Filipinos love to do balot. Balot food. Bring home. Bring home food. You know, the leftover food. So, we bring it home. Okay. And then, bangon. Rise up. Okay. Example. Oy, alas nueve na. Bumangon ka na. What do you think is the translation of that one? Okay, it's already nine in the morning, so please rise up or get up. Okay. And then read is basa. Okay, basa. Basagin means to break intentionally. Binasag ni Juan ang puso ni Maria. Puso is hard. Okay? Bayad. Okay. okay. So when you write a jeepney, bayad po. Okay, bayad in that case, when you say bayad po, it could mean like the fare. Okay, here's the fare. Please hand this to the driver. Okay, but it, also, it will also mean the verb one. Okay, I'd like to pay. And then, benta, sell. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bili. Means, buy. Eto. This one. Buhayin. Okay. For example, buhayin mo ang natutulog na puso ko. Cost to live or make something alive. So please make my sleeping heart alive again. 
Okay. It's corny. So cheesy, right? But you know, Filipinos love... <laughs> we call it banat in the Philippines. Okay, so if you hear like banat like this, these are somewhat like corny, cheesy statements coming from Filipinos, but they love doing this. Okay, and then they would say, oh... <laughs> you know, some of these lines sound poetic, okay? Well, at least for Filipinos. I don't know with other cultures, though. Okay. Um, dala, this one. Bring or carry. Dawson, pwede mo bang, or pwede bang pakidala ng bag ko? Dawson, please carry my bag. Or can you carry my bag? Okay, this one. The sal, it's pray. Okay? Magdasal sa Panginoon. Pray to God. Okay. Another one. Galaw, which means move. Okay. For example, a person, you're, you're in line with another person, and then the person in front of you is not moving forward. So you can tell that person, pwede po ba kayong gumalaw? Or Galaw po kayo, please. Okay. Gamit, use. There. Okay, what else? Mm -hmm. Hawak. Hawak means hold something. Okay, or hold someone. Hawakan mo ang mesa. Okay. Please hold the table or please touch the table. It could also mean that way. Now, I cannot go over all of these verbs one by one. So it's your role now to make sure that you go over all of these verbs because sooner or later when you have your examination or any test in the class, you might get to encounter some of these words. But I don't expect you, of course, to memorize. Okay? Now, if you notice... There are other columns here, and these are um, some things that you need to know about verb formation okay, or verb transformation from root to being a fixed verbs or a fixed roots. Okay? And I'm going to discuss this one by one. Don't worry. Okay, let's go back. Okay, now, as mentioned, Pandiwa ay binubuo ng salitang ugat at panlapi. Okay, in short, verbs in the Filipino language are basically composed of a root and an affix. Okay? It could be affix or affixes because there are verbs that have like prefix and then suffix together or there are also verbs that are circumfixed or infixed. Are you familiar with infix and circumfix? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to explain this one. Now, in English, of course, usually it's only prefix and suffix, right? But in Filipino, we have infix. These are like affixes inserted in the middle of the word. Okay? For example, when you say kumakain, the root for kumakain is kain, right? So you inserted the syllable um in between. That makes it an infix. Okay? Now, there are also the so-called circumfix in which the root is in the middle and then one affix is divided into two. The first portion is placed in the initial portion and then the remaining syllable is placed in the end. Okay? But it's very rare in the Filipino language to have circumfixed some uh, words only. And usually, circumfixed words in the Filipino language are adjectives, okay, not verbs. Uh, what commonly happens is that it may appear like a circumfix because you have a prefix and a suffix added, but the prefix and suffix are actually two separate affixes, then it's not a circumfix in that case. It only becomes a circumfix when it's one affix divided into two, initial and then final portion of the word. That's a circumfix. Okay, I'll explain more of that um, in the last slides that I have. Example, this one. That's what I mentioned. Kumain. Okay. 
So we have the panlapi or the affix here, and then salitang ugat or root is kain, so it makes the verb kumain. Okay, why is this an infix? Because again, it's in the middle. Okay, and then we have letter K here, which is part of the root. Okay, so something, a syllable is inserted in between. So it's an infix. Okay, now let's talk about tatlong aspeto ng pandiwa. Okay, now in English, tenses and aspects are different, right? When you talk about tense, we have the simple, um, the past, present, and the future. But when you talk about aspects of verb, we have progressive, perfect tense. Okay, these are aspects of verbs. But in Filipino, tatlong aspeto ng pandiwa, we are actually referring to the aspects of verbs or the verb tenses here. Okay? Let's have the first one. Past tense is called, everyone, can you say, perfectivo? Perfectivo. Okay, perfectivo. In English, that's perfective, meaning past tense, the action has been perfected or done. Okay? Ito ay mga pandiwa na nagpapahayag ng mga kilos na ginanap o natapos na. In English, these are words that express past actions or actions that have been completed already. Okay? Simple past, or it could also be the past perfect. I don't know if you've noticed this one. For example, when you say, I ate already, I have eaten already. They mean the same, right? So it's also the same case with perfect people. Past tense, or it could also be past perfect tense. Okay? Example. Take a look at this one. Root, Alice, leave. And then, pawatas is infinitive. Okay, the two plus verb. Okay, umalis. And then, perfectivo, past tense, is also the same. Umalis. He left. Okay, take a look at these two sentences, guys. Now, both sentences use the word umalis. Okay, but let's try to guess which sentence uses infinitive umalis. Si Tim ay naghanda para umalis. Umalis na si Tim. Any guess? Which sentence do you think uses infinitive to leave? Naghanda means prepared. Johnson? Uh, I think the first one uses infinitive. Okay. Why? Um, it's like many and then five times. And then the second one, I think it's like ten times. Okay. okay. For the second one, which signal there do you think makes you? say that it's already a perfected action. What were there? Iba? <laughs> I thought you were raising your hand. Yes. Okay, that's correct. Okay, it's the word na. When you say, when you place na after a verb, it means already. Kumain na ako. Okay, I already ate. Nagsalita na ako, I already spoke. Sumayaw na ako, I already danced. Okay, so na means already. Okay? Here, para is somewhat like the to in the infinitive. Okay? Para may mean for, or it may also mean to, if it's placed before the verb. Okay? So si Tim ay naganda para umalis, Tim prepared to leave. Okay, or team was ready to leave, and then umalis na si team, team already left. Okay? Kain, eat, kumain, to eat, kumain, ate. Okay, so for example, if we say, Uh, 
Again, take another these two sentences. Kumain si Dodong ng mansanas. Mansanas is apple. Okay? Naghugas ng kamay si Dodong para kumain. Hugas means washed. Okay? Now, between the two sentences, which one do you think uses past tense? Both of them use kumain, right? Past tense. Iba? Are you raising your hand? Iba? <laughs> <laughs> the second one? Naghugas? The, the, first the first one. Kumain si Dodong ng mansanas. Okay? In the second sentence, what word here tells you that it's not past tense yet? Aliyah? Okay, you're holding something, and that's actually para, okay, to eat. So, Dodong uh, washed his hand to eat. Okay, the first one is Dodong eat apple, an apple. Okay, same goes with laro, maglaro, but this one, obviously, you can see the difference. Maglaro, meaning mag, is about to. Okay, but when you say nag, it's already past tense. Okay, but there are only certain verbs that use nag as the prefix for past tense, and you can check that one in the handout that I gave you. Okay, not all verbs, you cannot say nagkain, that's wrong. You can also say nagalis. Okay, nagalis and nagkain is like part of the Konyo language that we have, which is a mix of Filipino, Visaya, and English. And that's not grammatically acceptable if you are to talk about Filipino language. Okay. And then we also have just finished tense. It's not really part of like any tense in the English language, but I would say that this is like under the umbrella of past tense. Okay, so if you have like past tense, which is already perfected or done, just finished tense, let's say it's a matter of like minutes or seconds ago. Okay. These are verbs that express actions that have just been completed or finished very recently. Okay, take a look at this one. Same set of examples, guys. Alis, umalis, past tense, umalis, kaaalis. Okay, so when you say kaaalis, I would say, example, kaaalis lang ni Aliyah. Aliyah just left. Okay, but when you say Aliyah left or umalis na si Aliyah, you cannot really determine when exactly, right? All we know is that Aliyah already left. But when you say kaaalis lang ni Aliyah, it means just very recent. Okay? Kakakain, kalalaro. Now, if you notice, what's uh, common among the three examples here for perfectibong katatapos? Okay, aside sa ka, what else? The first syllable, you use ka, that's one. Another one. Okay, the repeated first syllable of the root. Okay, so you add ka plus you repeat the first syllable of the root. It's like a just finished tense of the verb. Okay. Next one. Present tense. Okay, present tense is also called, everyone, we say, imperfectivo. Okay, the opposite of perfectivo. Okay, meaning not yet perfected. Okay, ito ay mga pandiwa na nagsasaad ng mga kilos na ginagawa pa, meaning it's ongoing, at hindi pa natatapos. Now, the present tense here, okay, could be, something that is still ongoing. So in short, it could be progressive. But later on, I'll show you a difference really of what is present and progressive in Filipino. Okay, take a look at this one. Alis, umalis, umalis, kaaalis, umaalis. So umaalis, umaalis si Aliyah. Aliyah is leaving. Okay. Kakakain lang ni Dawson. 
kumakain si Dawson. Dawson is eating. Okay? Kalalaro, just played. Naglalaro. Still ongoing. Okay, again, there are certain um, affixes that you need to attach to the root so that it will you can get the correct form of the verb. Don't worry, I'll, I'll discuss this um, in a short while. So if you have present past, we also have future tense. Okay. So I'll go exactly to uh, directly to the examples here. Alis, umalis, umalis, kaaalis, umaalis, aalis. Okay. If you notice, now what's left is the first syllable of the root is duplicated. If that's the case, it's future tense. Aalis si Alia ng Gonzaga. Alia will be leaving or will leave Gonzaga. Kakain si Doson ng um, tanghalian. Doson will eat. What's tanghalian? Lunch. Very good. Maglalaro si... Um, Maglalaro ang mga bata ng basketball. So the kids will play basketball. Future tense is contemplativo. Okay, from the English word contemplative, meaning you are to contemplate if you are to do something. Okay, now let's talk about limang uri ng panlapi sa pandiwa. Okay? Now, affixes, again, I'm telling you this, affixes for adjectives may not be necessarily adjectives, uh, affixes used for verbs. So there are certain affixes in the Filipino language that are exclusive for verbs only or pandiwa. Then some are for adjectives. Unlapi, as mentioned, is prefix. Kulapi, suffix. Unlapi, from the um, affix un, meaning una, first. Okay? Kulapi, from the word kuli, last. So that's suffix. Gitlapi, from the word gitna, middle. Okay? Or infix. Kabilaan, kabilaan, meaning magkabila, both sides. That circumfix. Laguhan has no direct translation because this one is unique in the Filipino language only, but laguhan is when there is a prefix, an infix, and a suffix all together in a word. So one affix divided into three. Prefix, infix, and suffix. Now you cannot imagine really that one because of course in English we don't have this, but there are, and it's a rare case in the Filipino language, um, affixes that are examples of laguhan. Okay? In our next class, next meeting, I'll give you some examples of this one so that you'll have an idea what laguhan, uh, what laguhan is. Okay? And very quickly, let's have this one. The perfective aspect. What is perfective again? What tense is this? Okay, past tense. Perfective. Per perfect. Okay. Now, the infix um occurs after the first consonant of the root word as in bumasa. Now, if the root of the verb starts with a consonant, it plays the um as an infix. Okay. So you get the first letter first of the root, insert um, and then the rest of the letters. Example, bumasa. Okay. This is um, right? And our root is basa. We place um here as an infix because the root starts with a consonant. But if, example, the word is awit. What is awit? Sing. Okay, it's sing. Okay, as a verb. 
I will. Now, since this food starts with, is this consonant vowel? Vowel, where do we place um? Okay, here. Umawit. Okay, I hope you're getting it. Okay. Same with uminom. Root is inom, so we place um as a prefix. Umalis, alis is the root. Starts with a vowel, so we place um as a prefix as well. Next one, imperfective. What is imperfective? Okay, present tense. Now, the infix um occurs after the first consonant, just like the perfective aspect. Okay, here, the first two letters of the root word are duplicated. That's what I mentioned. Example, this one, the root is basa, right? This one is past. So if you talk about present, okay, this is a past tense form, right? Bumasa. The rule is, if you insert um, because it starts with a consonant, what you will do is, you just repeat the first syllable of the rule. So it will become, okay, gumabasa. Okay, so in short, it's like this. Babasa but you put um as an infix. Ibuma basa. Okay? With root words beginning with a vowel, what if it's vowel? Same as umawit or awit. The affix um occurs at the beginning followed by the reduplicated first vowel as in umawit. So here, umawit, the root is awit. So what syllable needs to be repeated? Okay, the first syllable, ah. So it will become uma awi. That's present tense or progressive. Okay? It's still good? No choice, sir. Okay. So let's go back to, uh, let's have now contemplative. Contemplative is? Future tense. Okay. The affix is dropped and only the root and the reduplication remain. So no affixation here, but there's a reduplication of the first syllable. So here, basa, bumasa, bumabasa. Yeah. Babasa. Okay. Kain, kumain, kumakain. Kakain, okay, for the future one. I think the contemplative aspect is like the easiest one to remember in terms of structure. Yes. Which number? Uh, which one? Uh, this must have been a typo, I'm sorry. Um, it should be Aawit. Yeah, it should be aawit. It's typo. So you say umawit, umawit, aawit. Yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> okay. Next one. Thank you, Carissa. Um, now, what if we use the prefix nag? Okay. Nag is also for perfective aspect, okay, or meaning past tense. So you can say naglaro, naglinis, nagmarcha, nagusap. So if you see nag as the beginning of the verb, it means it's in the past tense form. Okay? But again, not all verbs uh, in the past tense form starts with the uh, prefix nag. If example, the uh, bumasa, right? You didn't say nagbasa. And then imperfective, present. If it's ongoing, as mentioned, you could also use nag, okay? 
But to make the verb present here, if you notice, we use nag to make the verb past tense, right? Perfective. But here, if you would like to make the verb present or ongoing, and then you use still nag, you just reduplicate the first syllable of the root, such as naglalaro. Okay, it's ongoing, it's present. Okay, and if you do the same for future tense, you don't use nag, instead you use mag. And then still you duplicate the first syllable. Maglalaro. Okay. I know 50 minutes is not enough to talk about all this stuff, right? It's okay. Um, I hope that you will not get tired of all the homeworks because that's where you also you know, get extra learning. Okay, and I'll try to look for other references or resources that you might want to explore. Um, I think I have them here on the power bank. Before that, mga katanungan? Questions? Wala po. Okay, I know you're still absorbing this. Okay, so I have already included here in the PowerPoint some uh, links that you might want to visit. And then I already uploaded the PowerPoint. So I just want to click on the links and then you'll be redirected to the readings. Okay, there are many instructions. There are more rules that you can read so that you have deeper understanding of this one. Okay, same goes for the Panuto. Everything will be posted on our Blackboard. So you hope that uh, you will visit our Blackboard tonight or tomorrow morning, okay, for the ano. Thanks. Okay, that's all for this afternoon. Thank you very much, guys. Maraming salamat.